I love elevators. They seem simple, but they have a surprising amount of technology behind them. While riding a very cool elevator recently, I wondered, how much of this could I replicate on my own using a $35 Raspberry Pi computer? Well, in this video, I'll show you what I came up with. From a pair of elevator control panels to a high voltage control board for a hydraulic powered lift system. Obviously, the coolest part of an elevator that we normally get to see is the control panel on the elevator car. So that's what I started with. And here's what I came up with. This is my version featuring a Pi 4 inside, along with this nice 5 inch display. Let's pretend for a moment that this panel is inside of the elevator. This is the call box that would go outside the elevator on each floor. It has a Raspberry Pi Pico 2W inside and communicates with the elevator panel using MQTT via Wi-Fi. But more about that later. Let's, for a moment, hang this call button on a fake wall that would be on each floor outside the elevator. It's already programmed to be for the second floor, so let's press the up button and see if the elevator comes to the second floor. This is exciting, isn't it? I can hear some activity starting. Door is opening. Please watch your step. Now I'm getting into the elevator and I'll press the third floor button. Note that this is designed for just a three floor building. So now I'm on the third floor. Someone gets out, someone gets in, and now we're going back down to one. As the doors are closing, we can hit the door open button to open them again, or we could also hit the door close button to make the doors close faster. One of the cool features I added is maintenance mode. Turn this key, and you can now use the elevator buttons for changing settings, such as the audio volume. We can also change the door open-close delay and even the language of the spoken messages. Espanol, Francais, U.S. English. Let's class this elevator up by making it sound British. U.K. English. Door is opening. Please watch your step. And if we get stuck, we can hit this alarm button. Okay, so far so good, but you're thinking, yes, you've got the controls down pretty well, but you're missing some important parts of the elevator, like a motor or two, and maybe a door? This Pi elevator's lift system will be based on hydraulics, where mechanical movement is produced by a contained pumped liquid. Instead of a big motor at the top pulling the elevator car up, we'll pump fluid into a tube to push the elevator up. That's a popular lower cost option for elevators that are only a few floors high. I gathered together a water pump, some PVC pipes and tubing, and various fittings. Then I set about tinkering and hacking the parts together to eventually construct a prototype of a hydraulic elevator lift system. But things could get messy, so I'm taking this contraption outside for testing. I built this high voltage board to control the hydraulics. It uses another Pi Pico W microcontroller to power these relays that can switch 120 volts at up to 10 amps, more than enough for our hydraulic water pump and relief valve solenoid. It also communicates with the elevator car using MQTT over Wi-Fi. Okay, here's how this will theoretically work. This tube right here is our piston, which the elevator car rests on top of. It goes into this cylinder right here, 
that when pumped full of water under pressure from this reservoir will cause the car to rise. Now in a real elevator like this, this section would probably be placed underground so that the elevator would start at ground level. Now when our elevator is up here, extended like this, maybe on the second floor, and we want it to go down, we release the water in the cylinder from this valve and the elevator will go down. So let's see if it actually works that way. When the control panel calls for the elevator to go up, the microcontroller will energize the relay, which then turns on the pump. That causes the piston and elevator to rise. There is some leakage because this mock-up is not a closed system. To make the elevator go down, the relay turns off the pump and opens the relief valve. That causes the elevator to go down gently using its own weight. If you've ever had the opportunity to look inside the mechanical closet next to a hydraulic elevator, you'd see a very refined version of my mock-up, but it does basically the same thing. The other motor we would need for an elevator is one that opens and closes the door. We can connect that to one of our other relays and the control panel will handle running that motor as needed. So we've covered all of the major parts of an elevator system and implemented it with a Raspberry Pi and some Pi Picos. I did not actually build a life-size elevator, but just having these two panels is actually a lot of fun for running elevator simulations or just playing around. You can also really confuse people by hanging one of these outside of a door. Is this an elevator or not? Let's take a quick look at how all of this works and how it was built. As I usually do, everything was mocked up and breadboarded before my final build. On this mock-up of the main panel, you can see the audio DAC and amplifier hat mounted under the display and connected to the small stereo speakers. On the floor call panel, you can see the Pico microcontroller and get a better look at the buttons that I used. They have the perfect look for an elevator panel and were purchased from Adafruit with a link in the description. I found a piece of discarded plastic packaging that was the perfect depth to hold the buttons, so I used it. The 16x8 LED matrix display is connected to the Pico via I2C. You can also get a look at the battery in the charging circuit. I bought this plastic case for the main panel, which is just about the correct size. But what to do when you can't find a box that's very rectangular for the floor call buttons? Well, improvise and bolt two shorter ones together to make a longer one. Notice that instead of using the covers that came with the boxes and drilling holes in them, I decided to design and 3D print custom covers. It takes a little longer, but offers much more flexibility. To make the panels look more like an elevator, I applied a very thin layer of sheet metal to the front of the units. I had no idea that my local big box hardware store sold all types of thin aluminum sheets that could be cut with simple shears. I also learned that sheet metal can make some really cool noises. Assembly included soldering wires to the panel's buttons and then attaching the front panel to the unit. In the floor call button assembly, you can see the power switch and charging circuit with the battery underneath. The matrix display is mounted on top. Later, I'm placing the cover on with the tinted plastic underneath. You can see the Pico mounted at the very bottom of the case. Finally, assembling the high voltage board required using some very stiff wire. The main panel is programmed using Python. At first glance, it may seem pretty straightforward. You push buttons and the elevator moves. However, moving the elevator to the correct floor and handling all of the possible up and down requests gets pretty complex pretty quickly. And this is just for one three floor elevator. I can't imagine the complexity of a bank of elevators running in a skyscraper. To help with the logic, I found out about something called the elevator algorithm, 
which basically states to keep going in the same direction as long as possible and make every necessary stop along the way. I very loosely implemented this using a Python list, and I stepped through this list over and over, skipping the steps that aren't necessary and repeating the current step over and over while the elevator is idle. You can see it execute the steps on this debugging output log. As I mentioned, the main panel, the floor call buttons, and the high voltage board all communicate with each other using MQTT. MQTT is the lightweight network protocol for sending messages from one device to another. It's very popular for Internet of Things devices. MQTT requires software known as a broker to route all the data packets where they need to go. The broker I'm using is called Mosquito, and it runs in a container along with all the other software in the panel. You can see all the containers running on the Pi from this IoT management dashboard called Belena. It's what I use to run containers and update them remotely without having to physically connect to the Pi. You'll notice a browser container which runs a web browser in kiosk mode on the 5-inch display. The browser is showing a custom page from this container which is a simple express web server. The data on the page is updated in real time using JavaScript. There's also an audio container that's used to take care of routing audio and runs a Pulse audio server optimized for devices like the Pi. So that's basically the story of how I created a fun elevator simulation using a Raspberry Pi, a few Picos, and a lot of parts. Once again, I learned a lot and will hopefully apply my new knowledge to some even cooler future projects. Until then, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.